So you'll have heard a lot of stuff in the media over the last few years about the energy transition and the importance of the energy transition. Um, it is factually correct to date to say that from an energy lens there has never been an energy transition and probably never will be with a historical form of energy which is traditional biomass, namely wood or dung. Um, it will probably shock you today to know that consumption of wood or dung in the world is still 28 million barrels of oil equivalent today. From a regional perspective, gas is 23% of the world's primary energy consumption. Here in South Africa, it's only 3%, and the 3% is at risk of being cut off over the next two, three years. So at the moment, we're at a sort of fulcrum point of change, uh, where things are changing. It's partly due to Mozambique, partly due to South Africa itself. The big energy trend of this year is not from the supply perspective. It's not fossil fuels bashing. It's actually the growth in the demand side. Uh, the most noteworthy global um, occurrence has been the increase in American electricity projections by the American utilities. Um, they were expecting um, electricity demand to go up 2 2.5% in the future. It's now 4% and beyond. The reason for that is the growth of data centers and AI, and that will inexorably flow through in time to Africa. Oil and gas is a very, very long-term business. Um, this is a typical life cycle. It's not unusual for about 15 to 20 years to elapse between a license being applied for and production actually starting. So to give you some examples, so some of the Namibian licenses at the moment um, that are extremely hot, the Shell block, the Total block, they originally started out about 2011, 2012, something like that. And it's taken to this stage to get to a position where various discoveries have been made and production will start in the late 2020s. So that's a time frame of about 17 to 18 years. It can be lower. Um, Cote d'Ivoire with ENI, um, Coral FLNG with ENI, again, can be lower. But even in those cases, in terms of overall production, it's never less from the, about seven, eight years from the start of exploration work onwards. So what that means is that the crucial choice at the moment for oil and gas companies is not so much the demand. People are pretty confident on the demand. There remains no substitute for fossil fuels. It's 82% of global energy. But it's really what are the above ground dynamics of an individual country that allow a player to say, we can make a return from here in 10 years, or we can't, as the case may be. Namibian oil and gas is probably the world's second most exciting discovery but it's been very, very downplayed in the South African media at the moment. So the theme of 2025 onwards will be how quickly South Africa starts to uh, become accustomed to an oil and gas future. But let's um, drill down a little bit and talk about ESCOM. So load shedding is well known. Uh, the likelihood of future load shedding is well known, especially after the elections finish. And you have around about 1,000 megawatts of, of coal-fired power um, naturally um, expiring per annum. What is going to come instead? Uh, lots of talk about nuclear, but it's pretty impossible to see nuclear until the mid-2030s, maybe even nearer 2040. Lots of talk about renewables, but the downside of renewables, as you see on the UK graph I list there, is the sheer intermittency of it. Obviously, South Africa has some wind, it has some um, solar, but that's counterbalanced um, with the sheer distances of South Africa that electricity has to travel towards to get to a load you know um, going from Cape Town to Joburg is the same as London to Barcelona or London to Rome so the transmission losses are really quite extreme the solution is often put out there as gas um, certainly by people like ourselves so what's happening um, with ESCOM and gas to power and all this good stuff um, so the draft IRP came out depending on which way you look at it it's got between 7.2 8.6 gigawatts of gas um, the number that I quote in the public domain is that um, South Africa needs 13 gigawatts of gas to power. How do I get to that number? It's really quite easy. Stage 6 or stage 7, which the country regularly hits, and then you add 15% of the country's winter peak to get to about 13 gigawatts. And that's our take on what's needed. You can argue for a higher number the more that the country increases renewables. Um, IRP has been discussed, of course it will be, but what is true about IRP is the further we go down the road, the more and more Namibia's discoveries will become public domain and that other choice and option for South Africa will come through. But giving you a couple of um, gas to power tariffs, um, we think base load CCGT at sea level is about one round 50, something like that. Mid merit is about two. Um, 
gas fired power on the high velt is about 1 round 60 and 11b 12b which i'll talk about in a second is about 1 round 10 so really really competitive and the big reason why um, gas to power is so competitive in south africa is the use of henry hub pricing this has changed over the last decade